Thank you very much for making a date with me today on the marketplace. Welcome back. Dredging works on phase one of the integrated container and multi-purpose terminal have begun at the Takwadi port. The dredging is a critical activity that will pave way for erecting a 600 meter long key wall for berthing of larger containers. When fully completed, the terminal will have an annual container throughput capacity of 1 million 20 foot equivalent units. In Natalia Kwanza has more in this report. In 2017, the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, GPHA, granted indigenous Ghanaian company Ibistec Limited a concession in the name of its subsidiary, Atlantic Terminal Services Limited, to build, operate and transfer the Takradi Integrated Container and Multipurpose Terminal. It will later be known as the Atlantic Terminal in the port of Takradi at the commissioning of the dredger and the dredging work at the port of Takradi. Chief Executive Officer of Ibistec, Dr. Nanasaki, said the terminal will transform and modernize the port of Takradi. Much. Um, the project is actually on track and um, I know my contractor will not let me say that it's ahead of shadow and we are hoping that the project will be completed before the planned commissioning of the project, which is somewhere the third quarter of next year. Yes. Talking about employment, employment is an ongoing issue. The contractor currently has almost 400 people on site, Ghanaian employees on site now. But as the project progresses, that number is going to increase. And as you can see, once the dredging is done, we are going to move to the next level, which is the placing of the blocks in the water. Director of Takrade Port, Captain Ebenezer Afizi, explained that the project is going to have an impact on turnaround time of vessel. So, Takrade Port has been deemed to be a port only for bulk mineral oil and uh, container vessels, ship carriers and the rest were not coming here as we expected them to. The reason was that our port had a, a deepest uh, draft of 10 meters. And these modern days, container vessels come with uh, drafts of 15 meters, 16 and the rest. Now this terminal that we are building now is going to have a depth of 16 meters Saturday to meaning we can bring in a ship of up to 16 meters. John Dinwall, the contractor executing the project, is expected to complete work by 2020. In Natalia Kwanza's report for Joy Business. Now, Acting Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Reverend Amisha Dai Usuamua, says his outfit is ready to take advantage of the influx of multinationals in the country. He says the GRA is collaborating with the South African Revenue Agency and other international tax firms to ensure Ghana derives maximum income from operations of these international firms. He spoke with Joy Business in an interview. We expect that we'll have built the capacity of our people. We expect that our revenues that we have expected from these um, multinationals are higher than we'll have anticipated in previously because we'll do a better um, job working with um, such uh, experienced uh, tax officers who are joining or teaming up with our tax um, officers to carry out the audits and we'll be able to evaluate and then so that subsequently when we are doing any further um, such in fact this is not the only one we will do we are also talking to the um, uh, the South African Revenue Authority and they also have very as good experience in the mining sector and therefore they will also be coming to partner with us in the same way to also do more of such areas. So we'll be doing a lot of these collaborations to build the capacity of our people. Yes, it's only in the mining sector, the South Africans. Uh, it's not only in the mining sector, but because you know there are a lot of mines in, and then you have the opportunity to interact with the uh, multinationals in that area. So then when you go to that area, you'll see that you'll get more exposure. Uh, so as we are picking the countries, we also have to look at the specific benefits that we'll get from the partnership with the country. We are keeping the momentum going and we are not um, resting on our house to make sure that come the year and before we start running. Um, you will have noticed that already um, this week there have been s s some companies that um, have defaulted that we have had to do uh, distress actions on. So the distress actions on which we did last quarter are still being done in January and February. So it's something that we are keeping the momentum and we want to make sure that we don't wait to the last minute before we 
uh, um, bring in the revenue. Again, there are a lot of development projects that need to be undertaken, and we want to see the money being available for the government to be able to undertake these development projects so we don't wait the last time. Again, you also know that as we go towards the end of the year, um, set of constitution comes on the elections, and therefore it's important that we work um, while the sun is shining rather than when it comes to the end of the year. We are a friendly organization, and therefore we encourage them to always come forward and let us talk and find ways of paying the tax. But if you default and we do all the talking and we still can't find a solution, then we have no alternative but to deploy the um, distress actions. So it is not what we wish to do, but we will not hesitate to do it if we need to. In other stories, more than 1,000 messages through WhatsApp and emails are expected to be issued today to confirm full payment of customers of collapsed financial institutions. This will be the second batch of payments aside 800 messages that were sent yesterday by the receiver of the microfinance company's spokesperson for the receiver, Philomena Kuzo, tells Joy Business some of the messages may have delayed as a result of the huge numbers involved. According to her, only customers receiving cash have been sent messages. On 24th, my team and I have gone around the uh, let me just say I'm uh, head of the Greater Accra region, so we've gone around some of the most of the CBG banks, and then the information on the ground is that uh, the MD of the let me just say the managing director for CBG is now trying to come up with the modalities, which are the procedures that are going to be involved in the payment. And this mod uh, you know, you have to look at the data that you have. You have to put the data. Uh, in shape to be able to send all these messages out. And these are very huge data you are working with. So cleaning the data before sending the messages out was, was quite mm. a job. Mm. But, but as of this morning, how many people will you say you've sent messages to or have received messages? Okay, as of this morning, we've sent messages to about 800 depositors. Mm -hmm. And can you give us some content of them? message is it that they should come for their money or okay. what should they do what should, how should okay the message will say dear and then your name and it will tell you that the full amount your full amount has been paid into an account a cbg account and then the account number is provided so that is what you take to cbg and proceed from there okay so these account numbers that were uh, uh, provided or were created was it in connection uh, have you collaborated with the people before coming up with such accounts or how, how do you come up with such accounts? Okay, for the data that we get, we, we deal with. When we prepare the data, we send the data to CBG and they create these account numbers for all these depositors. So once they create an account number for you, it means you've been paid. Um, initially, when we started and we're paying the caps, these account numbers were virtual. But now these are account numbers that are real account numbers that they've created this time around. Okay. So, so, so are you, can you confirm that all depositors of these defunct savings and loans and microfinance companies are going to receive their payment in full after receiving the messages from today? Uh, those that we've just sent the messages to. Yes. Are you saying that? We've sent to all the customers. No, we haven't sent to all the customers. It's ongoing. It's a process. So we've sent to, like I mentioned, we've sent to at least 800 people as at last night. We'll continue today. Okay. And it keeps going until we finish. I am sure some thousands will go. They will go in thousands, I'm sure. Okay. And that is a confirmation that they can get their cash when they get to an ACBG branch. Yes. And you know that we issued a press release to say that the payment modality is cash and bonds. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that is the process. Okay. So you sent to even those who will be receiving theirs in bonds. Is that the case? Not yet. Okay. So those who will be receiving theirs in bonds, they are yet to get their message. The, yes. They are yet to get their message. Meanwhile, Joy Business checks as some of the branches of Consolidated Bank Ghana in Accra indicate customers are yet to access their funds. Here's the Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the Coalition of Aggrieved Customers, Idris Mubarak. On 24th, my team and I have gone around the uh, let me just say I'm uh, head of the Greater Accra region, so we've gone around some of the most of the CBG banks, and then the information on the ground is that uh, the 
MD of the, let me just say, the managing director for CBG, he is now trying to come up with the modalities, which are the procedures that are going to be involved in the payment. And these modalities included, uh, how do you call it, text messages that we are going to receive as affected uh, depositors or customers. So we, we were like, if that is the case, uh, the, the, the CBG director, they should have thought of this and then maybe start something earlier prior to even the president's promise so that as the, pro pro the president stated emphatically that on Monday the payments will begin so that at least this message is crowd start started coming on the 24th but notwithstanding that whatever happened has happened so we haven't received any text message from Monday which is on the 24th we have not received any text message and we have a very large uh, group of individuals which are affected customers and we have some of them on the whatsapp platforms some we have them on telegram and other social media platforms and we communicate a lot because we have regional heads of the coalition for uh, for savings and loans uh, customers who are affected that's the cast lock group yes we have a very large unit and all regional heads of every region 16 regions so we communicate with them and they have also been communicating with their own hardest within the region and not, no show honestly no show nothing is happening so nothing. It's, it's almost mid midday are you saying that you've not received any message from the receiver Yesterday morning to yesterday midday to yesterday evening, no text message or nothing came. So if we are talking about today in the morning, nothing has happened in, in the afternoon, we are not even surprised. I mean, no one is surprised because we feel like the president probably just said something to make people happy. And then, but, but, but the receiver also indicated that uh, it's not only the text message that they are reaching some of you on because there may be issues with the chunk number of data that they are dealing with and all that. So maybe calls or emails or some reaching out to some of you on other platforms. Has there been any confirmation or otherwise to that? Uh, my brother, thank you very much. You see, this sort of issue, we shouldn't reduce, uh, how do I call it, this particular issue into some form of joke or something. As I'm talking to you now, the people who are involved, there are a lot of uh, professors, there are a lot of, uh, how do I call it, uh, university graduates, there are a lot of workers, big, big men who are affected by this issue. So when the receiver is coming out to say something of this nature, you should think about it because we are not just illiterate or mere individuals that we will get text messages, we'll get emails, and we can confirm to the media that we've received something of that sort. So it's not true. You've not received not. either text message or WhatsApp? Not at all. Okay. Not but, 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 but has the receiver spoken to you at least yesterday? Either the receiver or the CBG? The receiver, okay, well, what I saw or my team and I have seen, Greater Accra region, what we are seen, and even in consultation with other regions, what is in the public domain was a publication on uh, the other websites. So I say the uh, other news websites. Yeah. Well, so Joy Business is closely monitoring the situation and bring you updates as they unfold. Away from that, let's turn attention to the oil and gas sector. Some oil marketing firms, OMCs, have indicated a marked reduction in fuel prices may not be realized now because of the stabilization levy imposed on petroleum products. This follows concerns that the various OMCs are deliberately, or have deliberately, failed to reduce prices despite favorable market conditions. George Buffy has a rest on the story. Some of these firms have told Joy Business that the current cost build-up and reduced margins might make it difficult to adjust prices as quickly as possible in line with current developments on the international market. They also argue that the current taxes on the price build-up, or let's say the various taxes on each litre of product sold, have worsened the situation in terms of reducing prices at the pumps. The National Petroleum Authority last year directed all the oil marketing firms to reintroduce the levy on the products, 12 pesos on petrol and 10 pesos on diesel. The oil marketing firms also argue that the continuous imposition of these levies will not make it prudent to reduce prices now. However, some of them have told Joy Business that if the Ghana city continues to appreciate and the global prices also drop, maybe they might revise their notes and we should expect some reduction in two weeks' time. Some analysts have also questioned the stance of these oil marketing firms, saying it defends this whole price deregulation policy of the petroleum sector, where a place should automatically review their prices based on market conditions. Well, so we want to get views on the Institute of Energy Security, IES, on why a deregulated market uh, is becoming difficult for OMCs to review 
their prices downward significantly, as well as some forward-looking projections that we want to make. And I've been joined in the studio by policy and research analyst of the IES, Raymond Nwokwa. Raymond, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Now, so tell me, what's your view? Because yesterday we spoke with uh, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, and they seemed to be agreeing with the OMCs because they have, they said they have various other, you know, um, um, indicators that also point to the fact that uh, um, petrol prices may not or should not go down drastically. What's the view of the IEAs? Thank you very much. For us to have a very informed conversation, mm. we need to separate the issues. We need to separate the price stabilization recovery levy from the fall on the international market per our projection for this particular window mm. that we are in. We realized there was a significant decline in the international benchmark, that's bank crude. If you also look at our city city. dollar regime, mm. there was an appreciation close to 5%. Exactly. If we also look at the international price of gasoline and gas oil, there was significant reduction as, as of 10% and 8% for gasoline and gas oil. Now, these are major indicators that that should ensure that prices to come down. Because when prices are going up quickly, mm. the OMC shoot prices up like rocket. But when it's time for prices to come down, mm. when there is fall in the market, then prices begin to drop like they are wearing prices. Well, so they are saying that there are other conditions, I mean, there are other uh, factors in the, within the price build up yeah. of the oil and gas. So we must know that the price stabilization and recovery level did not start only this year. It started far back in. 2019, that's July, I guess, there about. So why are they complaining now? Now, one of the reasons for the implementation of the price stabilization recovery levy is to ensure that the consumer is happy. That's the mm -hmm. main reason why they give. Mm -hmm. So when, now that they are applying the consumer, not, then the full import of the mm -hmm. application is not, is not realized. Mm -hmm. But we must know that when prices are going up, the, the percent that OMCs increase, that's what we are talking about. For example, in December, there was an increment. Mm. The first quarter and the second, the first quarter of January and the second quarter of January, there was an increment, about two percent. Now there's a drastic decrease in prices on the international market. We are expecting that the prices to also come down drastically. We are not saying that they don't have argument to be made for the taxes in the price builder. We are talking mm. about. We are not mm. saying that they should not make argument for the margins, mm. the levies, and the taxes. They can make argument, mm. but that to be separate from. So, so now that they are not market. doing it, do you think that the NPA can compel them to actually review their prices? Of course, value? they must. Government is the agent of the consumers. Mm. They are our agent. They must, and they are the regulators of the industry. They must ensure that the OMCs obey the fundamental of a deregulated market structure and ensures that as prices are coming down with higher percentage, prices must also go down at a local pub with higher percentage. Because when prices are going up, they also skyhackers mm. their prices. Now, do you think it's time for the removal of some taxes, you know, vis-a-vis, -vis, I mean, other, other conditions? That's why I say it's a conversation mm. we can have another day. Because, mm. for example, the price stabilization and the recovery levy is inside there to help for subsidy for premise full and residual full. Mm. Now, we can have a conversation, how far is that project? What is the benefit? Yeah. How is the application mm. being done? Mm. If you look at it, then we can have a conversation of those Taxes and levies should yeah, be reduced. I'm saying I'm asking this because you know we are a net importer of petrol or, or crude, yeah. and and for the fact that you know prices have dropped significantly on the world market yeah. and our city is also appreciating, it means that government may not maximize revenue from crude crude exports. In that regard, it has to you know make up for revenue generation through these taxes downstream. So when prices are going up, they're making enough revenue. Do they reduce prices? That's the question mm. you must ask. So if prices are going up and they're reducing prices at local mm. pump. Then they can make argument that when prices are coming down on the tax market, mm. then they will not decrease prices. But yeah. if prices are going up, they're increasing prices. Mm. And when prices are coming down, they don't want to reduce prices. That's very unfair to the consumer. Right, so, so what's your forecast for the next month or, or Yeah, forward? so okay. going to the uh, first quarter of March, mm. we, the CD is still doing very well exactly. against the dollar. And at this moment, as you know, the COVID-9, that's the coronavirus, exactly. is still spreading across Asia and even now it's in Europe, there is the dove Spain. The, yeah, Spain yes. and Italy. The, the dove toll in um, Italy have increased. And even in Kuwait, Omar, Bahrain and other countries mm. are also fa facing the same plight. Even the OPEC plus, they are yet to agree on the cut. They are going to have their meeting in uh, in March next week. We are hopeful that maybe they could have a consensus and do some cuts on the oil mm. production so that the supply growth in the system will be taken so that Prices will go, but 
as uh, for the first quarter of March, price, mm. we don't expect prices to go high because our our CD dollar relation is very good and mm. prices are still coming down. So, so what do you expect OMCs to, to do? We expect mm. still we expect OMCs to reduce prices at the pump going to what March. margin, for instance? Uh, uh, by the, this window have not ended. By okay. by Thursday, oh, uh, IES should be able to calculate and bring it to uh, consumers as we have been doing mm. to for them to know uh, exactly the margin that is supposed to go down. All right. So I'll, I'll get back to you for your final words. But before then, President of Imani Africa a Policy Think Tank says the call for reduction in fuel prices at the pumps, despite the city's appreciation, is not feasible as the market is deregulated. In his view, consumers have options to choose from. According to Franklin Kujo, it's not automatic for prices to start going down over factors that are temporal. Let's hear from him. Decreasing fuel prices. Well, it's a deregulated market, and I suspect there are reasons why they are not doing so. Um, I don't think there's only one price at the pump. Is there? I think Goal has reduced its prices, hasn't it? People say it's, it's too meager. Well, I guess, um, again, it's a liberalized market. And I think people should take their options. There are other fuel stations that may be selling quite low. I'm not too sure. It's not, you see, it's not so automatic at every point in time to be seeing these things pass through. Um, but I'm sure at the right time, these things... Could well be the only uh, fuel pump or uh, company reducing is People say it's too insignificant, 0.2%. Two percent is insignificant considering the stability of the city. Well, then there should it should be more. You see, let me tell you one thing: the thing not to start jubilating about and start behaving like an Arabian prince is that the fact this this appreciation is not going to last. That's the point people need to understand. Mm -hmm. It's not going to last. So the moment you start jubilating and start acting recklessly, you are going to have X on your face. I think that is the only reason I can give for this. Let's wait for it. Let's just, let let's study it for a while and see whether the impact can be felt greatly. But if there are noticeable changes, we should have. Also, that was President of Imani Africa, Franklin Kujo. So that's what Franklin is saying. It's not going to last. What's your view on that? So uh, my senior, Franklin Kujo, you know that... Uh, mm. The prices, uh, the price build-up is not only about the city appreciating. It's also about prices on the international market Markets. falling, mm -hmm. like gasoline and gas oil and the international benchmark. These have been falling since the beginning of um, February. And mm -hmm. it's continued to fall. Even yesterday, price tumbled by 4% mm -hmm. because of the panic that the epidemic will become pandemic. So, and right now, Adam, we have not found vaccine for the virus. Mm. So, these are great factors. So, so there's, not, no, there's no indication that it's going to have, um, move up again soon. Yeah, exactly. So, mm. it's not just that it's not going to last. It's, has, it's already lasting. And there's even fear <laughs> that it become pandemic. Right. And if prices increase for a particular point in time, they increase up like a, rec uh, a rocket. So, when right. it's coming down, whether it's going to have, last or it's not going to last, it must go down. For the consumers to be happy. Thank you very much. That was uh, Raymond Nuo for his policy and researcher at the Institute of Energy Security. And on that note, wrap up this afternoon's edition of Marketplace. Many thanks for your company. My name is Imano Apuaji. We are here to you.